just lavish your love on him this evening. Just begin to speak to him, admonish him, extol him, magnify him, glorify him. Any word that comes to mind that gives him praise, that exalts him high above any situation, high above any stronghold, high above any addiction, high above any fear, high above any doubt, whatever it is, just exalt him. Lift up his name, open up your mouth with a sound of praise to the Lord. Open up your mouth with a prayer to the Lord, with a song to the Lord. He's doing a new thing here in this room right now. He's doing a new thing here in the people of God. He is moving like a mighty rushing wind here in this room. Will you catch the wind this evening? He's asking, are you listening to me? He's calling out to sons and daughters. Deep cries out to deep tonight. Deep cries out to deep tonight. Deep is calling out to deep. He's calling out to us. Yes, he is. Oh, he's calling out to his loved ones, to his burning ones. He says, here I am.
Thy kingdom, thy will be on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom. Everything that has breath, sing thy kingdom, thy will be on earth as it is. Let heaven come. Let heaven come. Let heaven come. Let Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
watch your breakthrough. Worship. Worship. It's spirit and in truth. Come on all over this facility. To every viewer watching online. To every person watching. Come on. Worship the King in spirit.
let it rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Open up your mouth and say, Open the floodgates of heaven. Yeah. Let it rain. Oh, let it rain. Oh, in this place, God, let it rain. In No. 
Father, we thank you, we bless you, we worship you. Come on, don't take this moment lightly. Dive deeper into the presence of the Lord. Go beyond the realm of your carnal mind and step into the Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, the anointing and His anointing. Come on, Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the one who rose on the third day, is alive today. He is the King forever. He is the King forever. Come on, somebody go deeper, go deeper and bless His holy name, Jesus. Because you're too busy looking at lights and fog. You're too busy judging based upon the exterior and you can't even tap in. Yeah, yeah. If I were you, I'd say, God, forgive me for being focused on it, what it looks like instead of focused on what you want to do in my life. Yeah. I'm about to tell you something in this building. When we say we want to see you, show us your glory. Not only are we saying we want to see Jesus, but for God to show you his glory, there has to be opposition. Thank you, clap right there. Because see, when you see the glory of God in the Bible, even throughout the New Testament, it not only showed up when they prayed, it showed up when there was impossible situations. 
It showed up for Paul and Silas in the midnight hour. It showed up when the man that was lame needed to be healed. I dare somebody to shout, show us your glory. We want to see you. Show us your glory. in this building you've come in here with a burden you've come in here with some situations that you thought was just about the enemy messing with you and here's the deal God said that situation is for my glory It may look ugly right now, but when I get a hold of you, I'm going to make the devil wish he never messed with you. Because that very thing that's in your way, I'm going to reveal my glory in your life and make a way. I dare you to shout, way maker, miracle worker. Come on, somebody. He's a way maker. Don't you quit. Don't you give up. Don't you come in here like you don't know why you're here. all over the room those of you watching online you are about to get free tonight you will never go back to that Mickey Mouse wannabe faith you thought you had because some of you in this building you need real faith and those of you who already got faith get ready to step into greater faith right now in the name of Jesus Holy Spirit of the living God we ask you to make such a deposit tonight that will make the enemy nervous in his very tracks we ask you to make such a deposit in our life that will bring an intimidation to every demon and devil that has tried to destroy our life make a deposit tonight Holy Ghost through the Word of God the Dabar of God the Word of the Living God let God be true and every man a liar in the name of Jesus let God arise and every enemy of God be scattered come on and give God a praise hallelujah hallelujah we love you Jesus we give you praise amen come on give God one more praise find three people give them a high five Tell them you're going to get what you came for tonight. Come on, find somebody you don't know. Find somebody you ain't seen before. Give them a high five and tell them you're going to get yours tonight. You're going to get what you came for. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory. Hallelujah. You're going to get what you came for tonight. We didn't come here to play Ring Around the Rosie. We didn't come in here to have this land church. This ain't Six Flags. This is the kingdom of God. This is the place where people get free. This is Extreme Harvest Church. I, I dare somebody to shout hallelujah. Man, oh man. Now, 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 I got to give you a fair warning. There was a disclaimer on the door that you may have missed on the way in. We're not here to make you happy. Thank you for your enthusiasm. We're not here to make you comfy. 
We're here to make every devil that tried to follow you here so uncomfortable, so squirmy, wormy, that he ain't going to leave with you when you leave here. Just filling you out right now, that's all. Look at your neighbor and say, you got the same opportunity I got. Now look at somebody who, who it, it. You got the same opportunity that I got. That's what separates the man from the boys, the whiners from the complainers to the doers. Because you got the same opportunity for God to move the way he wants to move. You got the same opportunity. I don't care if you grew up in the ghetto with your mom getting high in the house or you getting high the last 20 years. I said God has given you the same opportunity to get your mess together. I've seen people, crack babies, grow up doing mighty things for the kingdom of God. Seen doctors give reports that you should abort your child because they'll never do this and do that. And I've seen people that said to hell with what the doctor said. I'm standing on what Jesus said because those reports came from hell. I don't receive it. I don't believe it. And they seen God do great things. Is there anybody that knows God is able? Look at your neighbor say, God is able, and so are you, for God to move in you. I'm not going to make no excuses up in here. Well, we'll oh, man, it's going to get good tonight, man. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you, help me, Lord, because I can't deliver this word without you. I know it's going to be a word that's going to break so many people up. For some, it's going to catapult them to a whole new level of faith and understanding. But Holy Spirit, I acknowledge that without you, it is all in vain. So, remove the faces. Even the ones that are looking at me like they just dare me to preach to them. That let me not see their faces. But let me see the love of Jesus all over them. Let me see the kingdom warriors that they are. Even the most filthiest of sinner in the building right now, of which we once all were for those who are redeemed. Let me see that person, God, full of the armor of God, filled with faith. Jesus, have your way. Have your way, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. We're going to get right into it tonight. We had a spontaneous service last service. I wanted to preach, and we just went to laying hands on folks, and demons started coming out of people, and people got saved, and people got free. But, man, there's nothing like getting the word on the inside of you. Because when you get the word in you, you get to leave not just with what happened at the altar, but you get to leave with some power. Come on, somebody. Ah. I do want to take the time and welcome everybody that is watching online. We love you. And we are going to skip over right now for the moment for the tithe and offering. And we do pray that you'll stick around long enough to sow a tithe and offering. And don't just say, oh, we're praying for you, Pastor. Your actions speak a whole lot louder than your words do. But praise the Lord. Come on, give God another praise. Oh, I'm excited about this word. If you have your Bibles with you, open them up to the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. And if you have your phone with you. While you're doing that, if you go to Facebook and just share this with as many people as you can, even if they get mad, all they can do is block you and, you know, 
So let them block you if they have to. But I guarantee you, if you share it with 20 people, at least three or four of those people are going to get something tonight that's going to put a fire in their belly. I'm telling you. I, I'm telling you. That's how, that's how powerful this word is going to be. I'm excited about it. I am going to be in the Amplified. And then I'll read out of the King James. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Hallelujah. Verse 10. If everybody there say amen. All right. Can y'all see out there? Y'all good? Okay. I got a whole lot of light up here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank God for our media team and our sound team, lighting team. And appreciate you. Come on. Give God a praise. They're the ones that are helping bring this message to those of you that are just logging on. By the way, for those of you that are just getting a tag or you just got this service to your phone, it's not because somebody's trying to get you to join Extreme Harvest. It's because somebody believed enough and had faith enough to share this service with you watching in the hopes and faith that you may find something worth watching tonight and find the Word of God to set you free and to break open a whole new dimension of God's reality in your family. So we pray that you will receive this word tonight in Jesus' name. So the word of God says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For there is no activity or planning or knowledge or wisdom in the grave, in Sheol, the nether world, the place of the dead, where you are going. I again saw under the sun that the race is not given to the fastest. Some translations say to the swift. And the battle is not given to the strong. And neither is bread given to the wise, nor riches given to those of intelligence and understanding, nor favor to the men of ability. But time and chance, time and chance, somebody say time and chance, for time and chance happen to them all. Time and chance happen to them all. What is the Bible saying here? People who are prosperous, there are some people that are born into wealthy families. But there are some people that are wealthier than those born into wealthy families that were born into broke families. Now, I'm using natural terms right now. We're going to go a little bit deeper. There are people that are born into a family with a mom and dad that are not as better off as one that even got some mom and dad in the mom. Because people seem to think that I can't make it because I was born into a disadvantage. And, and, and we allow people to tell us that, well, because your grandma had it, you're going to have it. Your daddy did this and your uncle did that. And now you're doing this and you're doing that. And we begin to allow our life to be built upon what society or what people label us and tell us we can or cannot do based upon where we come from. And that is a lie straight from the pit of hell. Because the Bible says, if I may parathetically insert, you can be an adopted Korean and be successful coming from not even knowing where you came from, being a youth pastor in a ministry and making every devil mad with your uncompromising approach to the word of God. Didn't mean to talk about you, Pastor Drew. 
You can be an ex-dope addict, crack addict, dope selling 14, 13 year old on the streets of Fort Worth, Texas, and then get saved and sanctified and born again. And God put a mic in one hand and a Bible in the other and preach this gospel to the entire world. You can grow up and have every PhD in psychology or any other degree you want. But one thing is certain. Time and chance happen to all. For every person in the building right now, you have an opportunity. You didn't come to church because you just wanted to come. No, you came because you want to grow. You're doing what people call putting in work. But yet there's people that will complain about their life online or wherever they're at and what they don't got and what God hasn't done and what God should have done. But yet they're still sitting on their blessed assurance, doing nothing, expecting something to happen. And the Bible says, listen up here, Bakaroo, the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but time and chance, meaning opportunity is given to everybody. I dare you to shout everybody. Shout everybody. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And we was all ugly, and some of us still are. I don't know. But we don't want to hear that kind of preaching. Because then it lets us know. That I can no longer use a crutch of coming from the west side. I can no longer use a crutch of being abused growing up. I can no longer use the crutch of being molested when I was a child. Because my Bible tells me if I want it, baby, I can have it. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, when you have gone through hell and you realize what I went through is not going to stop what God has ordained for my life. I'm going to do what I got to do. If I got to crawl my way in this race, baby, eventually I will end up running my race. If I got to fall on my way, then guess what? I'm going to fall forward and not backward. I refuse to be a statistic. I refuse to be a has-been. I refuse to let what I've been through keep me from what God has me going to. Give him praise. I'm telling you, and I don't listen, people that get offended at this kind of preaching, because you can't make excuses. I don't understand it. If a mama can get on a via bus with five kids and find her way to church, what's your excuse? If 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 a mama can go through the pain of loss and suffering and still have faith in the midst of a hard situation if a daddy can be out of his children's life for over 10 years and then get Jesus and get back in his children's life and do something better what's your excuse time and chance happen to all and if you're not succeeding in what God is calling you to do, it's not God's fault. It's not your mama's fault. It's not your daddy's fault. It's not your teacher's fault. It ain't nobody but your own fault. Because, baby, you got an opportunity. But if you stop being bitter, stop being nasty, start saying, God, clean me. Lord, I'm broken. Help me. God, I don't want to live this way. I need you. You'll see God will turn it around that quick because he's good like that. Is there anybody that God's ever turned around? Is there anybody that God took you from nothing and then said, here you go. Here you are. Do what I called you to do. This word tonight will reverberate. This word tonight will be with this church for the rest of this year because God is not going to be entertaining whiners and complainers. You complained at the last church you were at. And it won't be long before you try to find something in this church to complain about. 
Complain, complain, complain. It's too hot in here. You weren't hot when you were shaking your booty in the club now, were you? Okay. It's, it's, it's too loud in here. But you scream a lot louder than that to your kids. Uh, I, I told you, Holy Ghost, I need your help. You see, we can easily make excuses and live off of that. How many more excuses do you want to make? Sometimes we blame the church. Oh, it's so easy to blame the church, ain't it? It's so easy because <laughs> every church is jacked up. And if it wasn't, it will be when you get there. <laughs> like how, many, how, how long are we going to make excuses? Pastor, I want, I want to grow, but you don't ever show up for church. You don't even show up for Bible study. But you sure show up when you need prayer. And then we get you anointed and we get the Holy Ghost and we pray and we lay hands on you and everything else. But we don't see you come back until you're ready to get another fix. This ain't a dope house. Come on, somebody. This ain't where you come and get fixed. This is where you come because you in relationship. Come on, somebody. That's what I do because it's who I am. You say right now your life is not where it needs to be. Let me politely and as politely as I can tell you, honey, your life ain't where it needs to be because you're not doing what God's saying to do for you to be who he's called you to be. It's going to take some work. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, trabajo. It's going to take work. You're going to have to work it. Come on, somebody. Let's just be real. It don't matter where you come from. I don't care if you wear a, a three-piece suit. I don't care if you wear Versace or you wear N1s. What do you look like in the spirit, my friend? What do you look like in the spirit? Because when you walk into that building for that job, they may be looking at the outside, but God is looking on the inside. He said, that's my daughter. That's my son. They came from nothing, but I'm everything in them. You're going to give them that raise. You're going to give her that job. You're going to give him a chance. He may got a felony record as long as the street outside, but he's got a daddy on heaven's side. Come on, somebody. I dare you to shout and give God a praise. Look at your neighbor, say, buckle up, buckaroo. God's about to take you somewhere. You got to learn to start putting in work. Time and chance happen to everybody. I didn't want to hear it when he gave it to me. Back in the day, he said, I don't care what you went through. I love you. I brought you through it. You keep talking about what you went through. When are you going to change your perception? When are you going to stop seeing yourself as the little bitty, bitty ghetto preacher? That's what some preachers didn't want to connect with me. Oh, he's a ghetto preacher. He came from, from, from the hood. All right, let me behave because, boy, boy we'll, 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 we'll open up something up in here. My God said he is no respecter of persons. He said I am a respecter of faith, baby. Come home, somebody. But you got to get to a point where you begin to realize, see, the Bible, if we read our Bibles like we say we're supposed to read our Bibles, we find out that it's full of people, even people that had power, money, and influence. While everybody was walking with Jesus, these people with power, money, and influence, they ran ahead of Jesus. Just to look at him. And some of us stay around him and we don't even behold his beauty. 
this man in the book of Luke. Let's go there quickly to the book of Luke. Because see, some of you say, well, you know, I'm, I'm just broken. I'm just, I'm just got mental issues. No, what you got is a demon. And it can go if you want it to. But sometimes we want to keep our brokenness because it gets us attention. And some of you can't get free because you keep letting people tell you that you're broken. And they keep feeding off your broken. As long as they keep telling you you're broken, oh, yeah, I'm broken. I am. You're right. I am. No, baby, you ain't broken. You about to get healed in the name of Jesus. We bind that demon. We cast out that doubting spirit. We cast out that spirit that says you can't get up because you can. You were broken, but you're healed. You was lost, but you're found. You was, oh, my God. You was in chains, but now you're free. Get around people who will stop telling you what you are in the natural and tell you what you are in the spiritual. In the natural, it may look bad. In the natural, it may look crazy. But baby, I got a strength in the spirit that's going to get me where I need to be. I, I may look like Minnie Mouse on the outside, but I'm Mighty Mouse on the inside. Come on, somebody. I dare you to give God a praise. Come on, give God a glorious heart. Hallelujah. Don't you dare ever walk in here talking about I can't. I don't need your I can't to have a platform for God. I need your I can. I need you, I'm going to get to work. I need you, put me on the serve team. I need you, put me on the greeting team. I need you, put me on the outreach team. I need you, let me pray for some people. I need, that's what we need to hear from you. We don't need to hear I can because God already said you can. I told you, you better share this service because some of you are like, oh, so-and-so should have heard this. Well, you should have shared it. I'll give you a moment. Share it, share it, share it. Luke chapter 19. I want you to say this and mean it. And whatever you're facing today, be it with your children, with your health, any area of any sphere in your life that you're facing opposition, it's not opposition, honey. Listen to me, man of God. It's not opposition. Is called opportunity. Those of us who see that as an opportunity can never get taken out because of the one who lives in us. Takes us through the mighty rivers. Takes us through the fire. And we come out and we don't even smell like smoke. Hallelujah. You're coming out. Do not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, meaning at the right time, you will reap a harvest if you don't give up. So many people give up because they get weary and they ain't got no word to sustain them. No oil to keep them. And then they keep repeating cycles. I'm good for three months in church, and now I'm out for five. And, and, and I thought I forgave him, but I didn't because it came back the other day. And I, I thought I had it together, but I just, I guess I didn't. It ain't that you didn't. It's that you thought a quick fix was going to help you. This is a lifestyle. This is kingdom. This is you understanding if I apply God's word daily to my life, I'm going to see everything he's promised me, my family, and everything that God has ordained for me. But see, if you don't stay in the word, you're going to get weary. You're going to get tired. And some people eventually are going to flat out quit.
wonder why I'm in your face all the time? Because you ain't going to quit on my watch. At least, hey, if you quit, it's going to be because you chose to quit, not because you had some backslidden pansy preacher trying to give you a bunch of sugar to satisfy your devil taste buds. Baby, we're going to give you the truth, and you need to grow. You're greater than you think you are because greater is he that's in you than he that lives in the world. You're not a statistic. You're not a has-been. You're not broken. You are a child of God if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. I dare you to praise the Lord. Come on. Your opposition has always been God's opportunity, but you just didn't have enough devotion to God to see it. Every opportunity, every opposition, everything the enemy brings our way, everything to the smallest thing has always been an opportunity for us to walk in the spirit. Has always been an opportunity for a glorious miracle. But how can we see that if we don't have a revelation of who we are? Look at look at this. Look at this. Look, look, look at Zacchaeus. Luke chapter 19. When you're there, say amen. Okay. Luke chapter 19, starting at verse 2. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans. Okay, hold him up. Go ahead. And he, and he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was of little, pequeño, stature. So not only was this man powerful, he was a rich man. He was chief, Pastor Drew, among the publicans. In other words, this dude wasn't just rich. He was the chief and he was rich. Let's you know it don't matter how much money you got in your bank account, baby. <laughs> you, you are, oh my God, come on. Let's keep going. because Next verse. And he ran before. What did he do? He put his... What would we call that? He didn't look dignified. He didn't care what people thought. They knew who he was. He threw all that stuff aside. And he ran ahead of everybody else because there was something that he knew would keep him from seeing him. Can anybody tell me what that was? Huh? He was short. You dare say like your pastor, we're going to box. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. He was short. Probably shorter than me. But he knew I got a disadvantage. But time and chance happened to everybody. I got to think. I got to think, think, think. This guy, Jesus, is coming. He's coming. And I've heard so many great things about this dude. And, and I just see all these hundreds and thousands of people surrounding him. I have no idea what I'm going to do to even be able to look at him. I don't even want to talk to him. I just want to look at him. Like, there's something about him that I just got to look at him. I got to see him. Even if he don't see me, I, I just got to see him. So he runs. He runs and he's going. He's trying to beat all the crowd. Okay, he's running. Let me get up here before they come over here so I can get up this tree. I know of a tree up the road. And if I can get over here, I might be able to see him. Hold on. Let me see. There he comes. There he comes. There he comes. Oh, man, that's Jesus. And he ran before him, and he climbed up into a sycamore tree. This is the closest thing we can get to a sycamore tree in here. And he said, but Jesus was going to pass that way. Next verse. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up, and he saw him. And he said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste. Hurry up. And get down here, for today I must abide at 
your house. Of all the people, of all the crowd, Zacchaeus said, I'm short and there is no way I'm going to get through that press. Even if I press, I'm just too short. He didn't allow his little disadvantage to keep him outside of seeing Jesus. Matter of fact, he said, you know what? I'm going to find me a sycamore tree. And he ran and he climbed up. And he didn't even call on Jesus. Did you notice that? He didn't say, hey, Jesus, yo. All he wanted to do was see him. And all Jesus wanted him to do was see him. All he wants you to do is see him. If you just turn your attention and gaze on him, you'll realize time and chance happen to all. Come on, somebody. Give God a praise. I dare you to shout hallelujah. Oh, come on. Come on. Time and chance happen to everybody. Everybody in this room, you're going to succeed if you truly trust God. And if you don't, you won't. Isn't it amazing? When Zacchaeus was up there, I'm sure that tree was a lot taller than that is. Jesus didn't have to look for Zacchaeus. His spirit was already touched by Zacchaeus. See? Oh, man. You think the pastor has to see you serving? It ain't about what I see, baby. It's about the one who sees you every second of your life. And before time ever began, because the kids didn't allow his disadvantage in the moment of a miracle to stop him from seeing Jesus. That's all he wanted to do was just see him. And then Jesus shows up and he looks up. Oh, what a sight. The king of glory, the God of all creation, looked up at a man on a tree trying to see him. Get it in your spirit. Jesus stopped and looked up at a man on a tree just wanting to see him. And said, Zacchaeus. Hey, get down from there. You're not meant to be up there. I am. Think about it. What was he crucified on? A cross that was made from a tree. Zacchaeus didn't allow anything, not even his own ugliness to stop him. He's still with. You know, it blows my mind. I'm not ready. I'll go when I'm ready. Be quiet with your lying self. Let me get my stuff together and then I'll end up. Come on, man. Who are you trying to kid? You ain't never getting nothing together till you come to Jesus, baby. That's just the way it is. You got to come as you are. Come on, look at somebody say, come as you are. Okay. Now, this is the thing. Let's go further. Let's go further. Y'all ready? And he made haste, which means he hurried up, and he came down and received him joyfully. Next verse. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be with the guests with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Jesus, the half of all my goods I'm giving to the poor. And if I've taken anything from any man by false accusations, I restore him fourfold. 
Jesus ain't said a word. He just stepped in his house. And Jesus' presence brought conviction to this man's true affliction. Next verse. And Jesus said to him, this day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is a son of Abraham. Somebody give God a praise in here. You need to understand tonight. There's no excuse for you to make an excuse anymore. He's coming. And some of you are not ready. Some of us, we've been fed a gospel that tells us God understands where you're at. God understands you're a sinner and you ain't going to ever get free. That's why you're under grace. God didn't come for you to live in bondage to sin anymore. He didn't come for you to make excuses as to why you can't be who he's called you to be. That's why people don't like to meet with me. Because there's nothing you're going to tell me that's going to make me think you can't do what God is telling you to do. Because time and chance happen to all. Everybody in this building, you're going to go as far with God as you want to go. Or you're going to keep holding on to the things that have been holding you back. Like your broken mindset. Well, I got a drinking problem. Well, I got this problem. Well, I married this woman and all hell broke loose. Well, well, well. Or you can own up to the fact that you're one of the biggest liars. <laughs> one of the biggest crybabies. Because you go to work and work your butt off without an excuse. But when it comes to surrendering to Jesus, we make every excuse in the book. My friend, let me tell you. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. No, and whatever I can do. So God says it's time to check out or the trumpet sounds. Nothing in this earth, absolutely nothing, will stop me from seeing God's destiny for my life in my family. Because I know God has a purpose and I have no excuse as to why I can't see it come to pass. Now, before you clap, understand this. Just as much as I have no excuse, neither do any of you. When he has died to redeem us from the enemy, he has defeated death, hell, and the grave. He's broken every chain, and he's made a way for us to go be with God the Father. He's died and rose again. Everyone in this building has no excuse as to why you can't turn your eyes to Jesus, as to why you can't let go of that old lifestyle. I'm telling you tonight, baby, if you get this in your spirit, You'll never be the same again. You'll never walk and say, I can't. You'll never say this or that. You'll be like, let me tell you, my God is able. Everyone in the room. This is for you. Because even some of the strongest Christians are some of the biggest complainers. I said it. When in reality, they should be the biggest soul winners, man. You're in the building tonight.
there's things in your life that you know. Well, you know, this and that, the other, man, come on. We don't need to hear all that. The king is calling you. Do you want to serve him or do you want to serve the devil? You make up your mind. But let's not patty cake and make excuses and draw everybody else into your mess because you don't want to own up to the fact that you're the reason you're not succeeding. I'm not telling you that you didn't go through what you went through. No, you went through it and it was hell. But how much longer are you going to entertain the hell you went through instead of the heaven you're going to? Come on, let's, let's talk about it. How much longer? You're either free or you're not. And if you're free, doesn't mean you ain't going to go through nothing. But you'll never allow the enemy to label you as to what you were. Because what you were is not who you And I just feel like I got just beat up. No, you didn't get beat up. Some of you, the truth be told, you feel just a little bit ready now. Like, man, they tried to tell me this. You know, all these different things. And people will walk right back out to hell. See, here, here's what I love about the way God has built me. I don't care how much money you give the church. I don't care how much you pat me on the back and, Pastor, you're an awesome baby. I will tell you like it is because I care about where you spend eternity. I care about your growth as a man and woman of God, as a teenager. And listen. I love every single one of you, man. But the truth is, at this very moment, some of you are not going to make heaven right now. And that bothers me. That bothers me that I have an opportunity before you to let God speak to you. And it bothers me to know that some people are in this building. That is a good possibility you're not going to make heaven if you do not surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Stop making excuses enough. That addiction ain't bigger than God. That lust issue ain't bigger than God. That anger and crap you've been going through is not bigger than God. God is bigger than all of that stuff. All you got to do is see him in your heart. See him. It's when you see him, he'll show you what you can be. For as he is, says the word of God, so are we in this world. It's almost checkout time for the body of Christ on the earth. And there's a last minute harvest come into the kingdom. And I see warriors. I hear the sound of a mighty army rising. I hear the sound of swords and shields coming together. I hear the sound of no matter what Christians if you're in this building and you're watching online and you know you have heard the Lord tonight I just want to ask you to bow your heads for a moment don't elbow anybody please don't do none of that stuff be real as real as can be in this building tonight because there are believers in here that you're strong in the Lord but you're also very strong in the area of excuses it's time to hang up the excuses I don't know where you're at tonight, my friend. But I speak to everybody in this building and those watching online, as well as those of you who are watching this service months later, even a year later. The Word of God is alive and active. The same Holy Spirit that is present here at this very moment is speaking to your heart. The only reason you can't break through is because you keep making excuses. What would it look like in your life if you stop making excuses? What would it look like in your life if you stop pointing fingers at everybody else who hurt you or everybody else who's trying to stop you and you begin to look into your own heart and say, God, it's me. If you're in this room 
and you're ready to lay down those excuses and pick up your cross and follow Jesus, then the altar is open for you to come and let Jesus alter your life with his Holy Spirit in such a beautiful way. If that's you, come on to this altar right now. Come on. This is for everybody that you know, man, I need to stop making these excuses. I need to stop saying, I'm going to clean up and then come to Jesus. You know, when, when I get my life together, you know, I'll go to Jesus and I'll talk with Jesus and, you know, I'll do the, I'll, I'll, no, 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 the excuses, excuses, excuses. Well, if, if my wife treated me better, I'd love her better. And I, no, 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 no. You loved her when you married her. And the enemy crept in somewhere. And it's time for you to stop making excuses and be that man that said, I do. Come on, somebody. Well, so, well I, if that would have never happened to me, and if, and if he would have never touched me, and if she would have never touched me, and if that would have never happened to me, maybe I'd be a little bit more focused in life. And you know what the bottom line is? It happened. But the healer, it's saying, let me heal that. Because you can't rely on that excuse anymore. You can't let him keep breaking you. Years have gone. And the people are still breaking you. And they haven't even seen you in years. It's time to let it go. No more excuses. Why you can't stop. Because you can. Come on, anybody else in this room? anybody else that's ready to say God I will never make excuses I will own it if I miss it God I refuse to allow it to mess with me I will repent I will not make excuses I will not make excuses I'm done making excuses I just want your presence I just want to be caught up in you I just want to know you, and I want to know you intimately, God, where my heart is filled with you. Zacchaeus got to have your presence in his home. And here right now, God, I want your presence in my home, starting with the home of my heart. I want to be caught up in your presence, God. I don't want to make excuses no more. Is there anybody else in this room tonight and you need to come to the altar? Come. 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 Oh my God, there's a lot of healing happening right now. Jesus. Watching online, this is for you. Come on. This is for you watching online. Comment on that screen. We got pastors right now ready to pray with you. You're not going to be left alone just because you're watching online. Come on, right now, let the Holy Spirit move. Right now, in Jesus' name. Come on. Tell them, God, no more excuses. I'm not broken. Come on. I'm not broken. I can do all things through Christ. I can turn away from sin. I can turn away from that, that alcohol, those drugs. I can turn away from that attitude, that anger, that, that fleshy lifestyle. I know I can do it. I know it. Why can't I do it, God? You said I can. Come on, come on, church. Let this be between you and Jesus. I just wanna see no excuses. Caught up in this moment. No excuses. You and Jesus. And I never wanna leave. Come on, you and Jesus, right here. Right here. Come on. Come on. This is an intimate moment right now. Prayer team, I want you standing by. I see God doing something right now with every individual. This is, oh my God, this is amazing. Thank you, God. Thank you, God.
tell him, God, I just want you, Jesus. Sorry. I'm sorry for the excuses that I've made. I surrender. Yes, God. Heavenly. covering it up no more. It's time for you to be healed. It's time for you to be whole. You'll never make an excuse again. You'll never make it. You'll never entertain that excuse ever again. Oh! Oh! What strength in the life of a person who doesn't make excuses anymore. A person that keeps it 100 with Jesus. Come on. 100 with their family. 100 with their children. Jesus. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I ask you to fill every vessel with your presence and the Holy Spirit. Come on, those of you that are praying right now, don't wait for me to pray for you. Open your mouth and say, God, forgive me. He wants to hear you. Get into the habit of praying for yourself and praying for others, but you won't always need somebody to come pray with you. Right now, it's time to open your mouth and say, God, I'm sorry. Jesus, forgive me. I need you. I want to walk with you. I want to walk with you. I want to live for you without excuses. No more excuses. Come on. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Come on. It don't matter if you've been saved a week, 40 years, or 40 days. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come on. Tell that, make that your prayer right now. Come on, speak to the king. I just feel so strongly right now that it's just you and Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. This is what he loves right here. This is what he loves right here. Nothing else I just want you. The instruction for our prayer team. I just want you to go and gently lay your hand on them that are praying at the altar. Don't speak anything, just lay your hand on them. Because this is between them and the Lord. But that touch, that touch, when you touch, you, you touch that person, it's going to be a point of contact for them. And they're going to feel the increase of the anointing. They're going to feel the Holy Spirit begin to surge through their body. The Holy Spirit of the living God begin to just, Lord, Holy Spirit, I ask you right now, fill them in the name of Jesus. Fill them in the name of Jesus. Fill them up in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on, right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, if God gives you a word to speak to them, to pray over them, be led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Don't leave anyone untouched. Don't leave anyone untouched. Touch one, move to the next. There's an impartation of the anointing of the Spirit of God, the gifts of the Holy Spirit right now. There's an impartation happening. 
Come on. Come on. See mighty warriors being raised up. Mighty men of God. Mighty women of God right now in this very moment. In people of no excuse. They're not going to be making excuses no more. I see entire families changing. Because there will be no more excuses in the home. There will be no more I didn't know. There will be no more but this, but that. But, 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 but. Get your butt out the way. It's time for Jesus to have his way. Come on. I see families rising together. I see entire families being saved. In the name of Jesus, I see children coming to Jesus as a result of mom and dad. I see children coming to Jesus right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. I see marriages being made whole. I see single people living pure. In the name of Jesus, come on, church. I dare you to stand your hand and pray. Jesus. This is your army, God. They are not broken. They are not, Lord God. They are not dysfunctional, God. No dysfunction here. No dysfunction here. No crutches here. No excuses here. just move like they normally do and I'm gonna tell you why in these moments you don't need to be led by your emotion not that that's nothing wrong with emotion but this is raw right now this is like man the Lord just told me it's, it's you and him amen so you needed to press in so that you're not having to have somebody pray you in does that make sense to you that means the way that you came to the altar this needs to happen in your home daily. These encounters right here, daily. Because don't tell me that sin don't come at you daily. We have to pray daily. We have to ask God for forgiveness daily. Of even the thoughts that we think that at times are like, dang, why did I think that? Right? And we don't make excuses for it. We give it to Jesus. From this moment, no more excuses. Come on, confess that right now in Jesus' name. From this moment forward, I break the lying spirit of excuses. My family, my children will be known for being faithful and available for Jesus. No more excuses. I will not teach my children how to make excuses, but I will teach them, own it, repent and move forward 
When we make excuses is when we get stuck. So in the name of Jesus right now, Father, I thank you for the people of God that are not people filled with excuses or why they can't. But from this moment on, they are disciples of Jesus. They don't make excuses for why they can't, but they declare the word of God saying why they can do all things through Christ who gives them strength. In the name of Jesus, right there where you're at, I want you to pray. Say, Jesus. Jesus, I repent for every sin, including excuses that I've made for things in my life that you told me to stop doing. Right here, I trust in you. Holy Spirit, fill me, lead me, teach me, guide me. No excuses will come from me no more in Jesus name I pray come on give God a mighty praise in the building hallelujah come on all over the back give God a praise watching online I dare you to shout and give God a glorious hallelujah glory to God come on look at somebody give them a high five give them a hug one of you sisters Come on, hug one of these sisters. One of you brothers up here. Come hug one of these brothers. Come on, man. Come on, some of these brothers need a bear hug in the name of Jesus. Come on, some of these bros need a bear hug. Hallelujah. Come on, some of these sisters need to find some sisters. Come on, sister, sister. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that this service goes viral. I pray that it just gets into the hands and eyes of people who have been bound by excuses. Amen. Hallelujah. Who's ready to give to Jesus tonight? Can we give to the Lord tonight without excuse? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Father, I pray tonight in Jesus' name, as we get ready to take up the tithe and offering, I pray, God, that for those that used to make excuses as to why they couldn't give, that they'll never again make an excuse as to why they cannot give. Father God, if we can give to our bills and give to put food in our belly, how much more, God, should we be able to sow into the kingdom of God and whose king saved our soul? Jesus, I pray for faithful tithers. I pray for faithful givers. I pray, Father God, that you continue to pour rain on those who have been sowing faithfully and generously. And for those today for the first time that will begin to give, Father, where it matters the most, I pray for a breakthrough blessing not only in their lives, but in the lives of everyone who considers, Lord God, your kingdom a beautiful place to sow. I pray right now for their jobs to increase. I pray, Father God, for their capacity to expand their territory to expand their ability to receive to expand in the name of Jesus I pray for supernatural miracle signs and wonders in every area of their life and God I thank you that you bring it to us because it will go through us in the mighty name of Jesus come on if you're ready to give give God a mighty praise hallelujah to the Lamb of God amen if you need an envelope just wave your hand Praise the Lord, our ushers will find you. If you don't need an envelope and you want to give by text or by cash app, there's the ways to give is on the screen. If you're texting to give, let me give you that number. Now there, there are people in the building that you're saying, Pastor, I'm one of those people that want to be a monthly partner that you need to message me. We're launching this thing in seven more days where we're going to go forward with everything that we have established. And I want to encourage you guys. Something great is happening here. They still have their hands up. And I'm, we, listen, I would be delighted and honored to see not just you so, but going the extra mile and becoming a partner. In Jesus' name, and those of you online. Now, 
You say, Pastor, I want to know more about that. You just message me. Message me on Facebook. Send me a message or send it to Extreme Harvest Church. But over the next seven days, that plane's taking off. And I'm assuring you, you want to be on that plane when it does. Because I know what God has promised me for the first fruit of those who end up partnering in this season for where this ministry is going. It is not going <laughs> telling you. It's going to be amazing. And it will be without a doubt when the response of the kingdom is released in those areas, you will know this is what happens when you sow. So I'm not telling you how to sow, what to sow right now. I'm just letting you know if you hear the Lord speaking to your heart, send us a message at Extreme Harvest Church on Facebook. Or if you got me on Facebook, you can send me a message and we'll get you connected and we'll definitely get that information. We have it on our partner wall in Jesus' name. I'm excited to see those names going up. Come on, how many of you are thankful for the people who have already partnered? Come on, just give God a praise for them. I believe we're going to see thousands of people. Thousands, I'm telling you. Father, tonight as we give, we thank you, God, for this location. Father, we know, God, that there's so much more, God, that you just that you have in store for us. We thank you for the property. We thank you, God, for the thousands of people that will come through this place. Father, we thank you for the outreach team. We thank you that finances, Father, for that second team that's going to be established. Lord, we thank you the finances, Father, for everything and that's going to be used in that team is already there. And Lord, we thank you that we declare an overflow in this house. An overflow, God, that whatever we have to do, Father, financially, we will not have a struggle doing. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, as long as souls are being saved and lives are being changed, Lord, this will be good soil to sow into. Far be it from us to ever get away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the gospel of Jesus Christ that brings salvation to all men, for both Jew and the Greek, Gentile, non-Gentile, for every living human being. In Jesus' name. And this is the gospel we preach. Everybody said, amen. Come on, God bless you. In Jesus' name we pray, and in Jesus' name we give. You may come up at this time, and God bless you as you do. If you have a birthday today, come on up, all of our birthdays. a partner just grab an envelope put your name and number on it and put partner okay get it from one of our ushers if you want to be a partner just raise your hand amen where's our ushers at just keep your hand up our ushers will bring you an envelope yet can y'all bring me the envelopes envelopes oh they went to go get them okay yeah we'll make that easier some people don't have Facebook okay bring them over here man if you are interested in becoming a partner here we go we have the envelopes right here. You can fill them out and put your number on there so I can contact you. There you go, sir. Amen. Anybody else, if you're interested, God bless you, my sister. Amen. Just fill that out and just put it back in the offering basket and I will contact you. God bless you, Miha. Thank you so much. Anybody else that's interested in becoming a monthly partner, here you go. 
Amen. Thank you so much, brother. Anybody else in the building? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, somebody. Amen. Y'all better put, hey, give God praise. God bless you, my sister. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Anyone else? Just fill those out. Now, if you don't know what amount you want to give monthly, you can leave that blank for now. It's between you and the Lord. Now, if you want to be able to sow. Okay. Y'all give God a praise. He just got hired driving 18 wheelers for the post office. Amen. His whole life has changed from, what, about a month, a couple of months now? Amazing, man. Praise the Lord. So, yes, put your number on. I'll call you. Make sure you put on there, too. If you do have a moment, put when is a good time to contact you. And I will personally contact you. Amen. Something that the Lord has just put on my heart. And we'll make time. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, they're looking at, are you going to make those calls, Pastor? Yes, I am. All 1,000 of them. Hey, you got to say, you got to speak, call those things that be not as though they were. Amen. Now, I didn't say about how many after the 1,000, right? So, <laughs> I got great faith, guys. I'll tell you what. If we didn't have a church that had great faith and a people that had great faith, we wouldn't be standing in this building or sitting on those chairs that we're sitting on. It took faith just to purchase the chairs you're sitting on. We've always, for years, we would have multicolored chairs and have all kind of throwbacks. You know, we, we get, hey, if the church was throwing it away, we'd be like, hey, bring it over here. We got it. You know, but God has been faithful. God bless you, my sister. Amen. God has been faithful through the years. And um, I told the Lord, we're moving to this. New I want to get brand new chairs so the people's bottom don't hurt after service, you know, sitting on that metal chair so long, right? But over there at the other church, they have some padded pews, so we're grateful for that. But guys, I want you to know something. Faith built this. How many of you have seen this building before? Do we have a picture of what it looked like? Put it up there. Put, put it up there what it looked like before. Hallelujah. Let's see if they can find it. If not, it's cool. But faith built all of this. Amen. All this stuff you see, look up in the ceilings out there. None of that was there. It's crazy. It was wild. People say, Pastor, you done lost your mind. I said, well, praise God. That's a good thing because I know it's got to be the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. We have another person. Amen. Here you go, sis. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many birthdays we have? Come on, Debs. Debs just turned 21. There it is. Check it out. Go ahead and hold on to that. We'll show it afterwards. Come on, man. We'll show it afterwards. Let's celebrate Debs with the best last name in the whole world, Ayala. Come on, somebody. God bless you, mama. Man. She just turned 21. She ain't drinking no Corona. She ain't going to go party. She having a Holy Ghost party on her 21st birthday. Isn't that amazing? Some people want to go in getting crunk when they're 21. She going in filled with the Holy Ghost at 21. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We celebrate you. Father, I thank you for her, and I thank you for her family, God. I thank you for her sisters, for her entire family, God, is evidence that the hand of God is upon them, Lord. And God, we know, Lord God, that this 21st year will bring with it extravagant glory. And God, we thank you that our parents are even blessed to see their baby girl turning 21, not wanting to do what the world wants to do, but simply throwing herself at the feet of Jesus. So God, I declare over her life, God. Oh, I just saw you preaching again in outreach. Oh, 
You've been asking God to increase your boldness and your ability to preach to where people actually will not just understand it, but you've been wanting a greater understanding of his word. There's no greater thing you can ask for. But the Bible says, blessed are those who are hunger, who are hungry and are thirsty for righteousness, for they shall be filled. And all you want is souls. You just want to see souls saved. That's it. And daughter, that is the heart of God. So may the Lord grant to you the desires of your heart that will bring him glory from glory to glory in your life will bring him glory to glory through your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Debs. Happy birthday to you. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. So we're going to show y'all that video real quick. Just, just a little glimpse of what it looked like. y'all have pictures when it was empty I want y'all to see the rest of the building that was a screen going up They have, we have other pictures when this thing was just a box. Nothing was in it except for the classes on that side. But I do want to say this. If it wasn't for your guys' support, that would have not happened. So I want to thank all of you. For those of you who don't think that giving is important, I will tell you this much. The giving is what keeps these doors open and what keeps the gospel going forward in all the ways that we preach. Okay, and I'm not trying to, you know, brag or anything like that, but people come here because you guys give and we're able to have these doors open. Okay, I wish I could say all this stuff came free and it didn't, but guess what? I call it a good kingdom investment. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on, somebody. Pastor Drew, would you come on up and dismiss us? Pastor Drew is a youth pastor here, him and Pastor Christina. We want to encourage you to get your youth involved every Tuesday night. They meet here in the sanctuary, and then we meet over there in the fellowship hall for Bible study. And I also want to say how proud I am of Brother Mario gave his first Bible study, and it was fire this past Tuesday night. If you missed it, you better go catch it live. It was amazing. Just a very proud moment. And that's what we do here. We want to raise up people that can preach the gospel, teach the gospel, and be effective in their area of ministry. So I want to thank all of you for just, you know, coming and growing. And I want to encourage you to be a part of these services. Get your kids involved. Bible study on Tuesday nights, Wednesday night, Thursday night outreach. 
Monday night prayer. So many great things are happening. Amen. God bless you guys. Pastor Drew. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father God, you go ahead and stand with us in the house of the Lord today. Father, we just thank you for the word that you released today, Lord. God, move on the hearts of your people. No more excuses. No more going back, Lord. We move forward and take leaps and bounds in faith today, God. We are not looking back. No more excuses. We are new. We are changed. So, Father, as we dismiss from this service, we ask that we're never dismissed from your service. In Jesus' name, and the church says, amen.